Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Justin Nelson's Projects. I just wanted to give some updates on the Ambilight 2.0 video from a couple months ago. So today, wait, hang on, today, so, something doesn't feel right. I know what it is. Okay, that's just much better. I just realized today is St. Patrick's Day 2024, so I figured I'd have a little fun. Instead of a green screen behind me, I've actually got a blue screen so I can actually wear green. Anyway, I was originally gonna redo the entire 2.0 Ambilight video that I spent so much time on, but 99% of that video is still completely valid. So instead, here are just a few updates, a few things that have changed as well as some improvements to the process. Now, I couldn't have done this without all your feedback back in the comments section so thank you guys so much for that so let's first address which raspberry pi computer can be used for this project well when i shot that last video all i had access to was a raspberry pi 4 model b i don't know how well that's gonna focus but hey at least the green comes through and i really thought that was the minimum required pi computer to run hyper hdr successfully but it hardly used any cpu and some of you guys had pointed out having success with other boards i since realized that hyper hdr after much testing works on the pi 3 4 and 5 but it even works on the pi 0 w including the pi 0 2 w now the only differences are if you use the pi 0 w Without the two, you need to install the 32-bit version of the Pi OS and of Hyper HDR. The Pi Zero 2W is in fact a 64-bit setup, so the instructions remain the same as on the other boards. I realize this sounds very confusing, but it's clarified on my website on the tutorial, which I've updated with all this new information. Now, the second thing about the Pi Zero is that, at least in my general experience, the header pins are not pre-soldered onto the board. I know I wanted to make this a solderless project but this isn't really that big of an issue you don't need to solder that entire 40 pin header on there and all 40 pins and get them right you literally only need five pins enough to plug in the adapter cable so stick around for an update announcement in the next few minutes on my level shifter adapter cable as i've added a few things to the so-called hyperion bundle version now moving on to one of the other issues that was brought up in the previous video i recommended a so-called pass-through capture card. However, I was doing this on an older Vizio TV that doesn't do Dolby Vision, so I wasn't aware that that device was not passing the Dolby Vision HDR signal to the TV. I confirmed this to be the case by taking that same device into my living room, and sure enough, on my Sony OLED, which is Dolby Vision capable, wasn't receiving Dolby Vision content from Netflix. So, I bought a few different splitters, and what I discovered is that any splitter that looks like this, where you can copy the EDID so fully licensed Dolby Vision content gets passed right along through as though there weren't even a splitter. Now the only downside of that is now you need another USB port to power the splitter itself but that can actually be a benefit which I will explain shortly. Unfortunately these devices often get targeted and pulled off the Amazon store because unfortunately there are bad actors out there who might use such a splitter to illegally copy licensed content. But I'll do my best to keep links up for products that are known to work on my website. So always check the website. So using an HDMI splitter, you actually don't need anything fancy. Just this simple little HDMI capture device, which is a $17, it's called a game capture, but it captures any kind of video. So overall, you end up with, yeah, a little bit more going on, I suppose. But uh, I'll show close-up pictures of how this is connected. But it's actually still pretty simple. And this way you don't sacrifice your Dolby Vision HDR. And note that this capture device can plug into a standard USB Type A. And it comes with a little extension. But for the Pi Zero, you need one of these OTG cables. Luckily, the Pi Zero comes with one of these. At least the kit that I'm linking below. Now, why did I say that this extra USB power cord could be a good thing? If you plug that USB cable directly into the television itself and your television is able to power off that port when you shut the tv off which you may have to go into some settings to figure that out but if it's able to do that 
It makes it even easier for Hyper HDR to know when the TV is off because it won't be receiving a signal and therefore it knows to blank the LEDs. So it's a much easier way than the more complicated methods explained on the website. All the details are in the web tutorial and I will keep that site updated as things change and you guys' input is invaluable. So leave any comments, suggestions, or other advice down below. So with all that said, I think we've managed to work out the few kinks that might have prevented some of you guys from wanting to tackle this project. On to the product upgrade I had mentioned. When you order my so-called Hyperion bundle version of the level shifter slash adapter cable, I will be including the following items. Of course, the level shifter adapter cable itself, three L-shaped corner brackets instead of just the two, because I now realize a lot of you guys still want to do a bottom row on your TV. You'll also get the same two pieces of Velcro, which are four inches and can be cut in half to pretty much secure all the little devices and things to the back of your TV. I'm also going to throw in one of these 12 amp rated barrel adapters because I realize not all of the 10 amp power supply bricks come with this. Even if you use the same link that I bought it from, some come with it, some don't. Of course, a couple of sterile prep pads to just make sure your LEDs and your Velcro stick properly. And I'll throw in one of these little 5-pin headers so you don't have to solder that whole 40-pin thing if you're using a Pi Zero. It just makes the soldering a lot easier. You've only got 5 wires to solder. Just make sure when you solder this little header, you skip that top left pin as pictured up here on the screen. You basically get everything you need to connect your Raspberry pie of choice to your power supply and LED strip. This could save you quite a bit of money because most of these little accessory items can only be purchased in large bulk quantities. I mean, I've got to buy packs of 20 of these just to have one. So I'll buy the bulk packs and send you exactly what you need. I really hope this video was helpful. Sorry for being a little silly with my St. Patrick's setup. I am mostly Irish and I just thought I'd have a little fun realizing, hey, I'm actually shooting a video on St. Patrick's Day. So so thanks so much for watching. Be sure to watch the original 2024 Ambilight video that should be on your screen by now and give this video a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button. Lots of projects are in the works. So until next time, questions or comments, leave them below. They're always welcome. Thanks again and I wish you the absolute best of luck.